Welcome to Inside Games, the only gaming news channel brave enough to pour one out for you, Zoo, the now defunct Switch emulator. That's right, Nintendo sued another one deep into the cold ground. But we don't have anything to pour. One second. Let me just reach down and grab a cold one from the cooler down here. <laughs> How did you, I didn't know you had one under the, under the desk there. That's cool. It turns out they're under a lot of desks. You just have to look. <laughs> Nintendo recently dealt a death blow to a popular Switch emulator in a settlement that is already impacting the emulation of older Nintendo games. Yeah, here's what happened. A little more than a week ago, Nintendo sued the folks behind the Switch emulator Yuzu in U.S. federal court, saying that they were, quote, facilitating piracy at a colossal scale. Oh, in court filings, Nintendo specifically mentioned Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and claimed that Tropic Haze the company behind Yuzu, was liable for the distribution of illegal copies of that game. As a result, Nintendo said the game had been pirated up to one million times before the game even came out. Wow. Uh, Nintendo also claimed that Yuzu's Patreon page was bringing in $30,000 per month and gave subscribers daily updates, early access, and special unreleased features to games like Tears of the Kingdom. What a way to put a target on your back. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, well, we'll get there, we'll get there. The emulator was actually so popular that Valve even included its icon in a video for its portable Steam Deck a few years ago. Oh man. All right, so how would the makers of Yuzu respond? Well, they folded like Paper Mario. <laughs> <laughs> agreeing to shut down and pay 2.4 million to settle Nintendo's suit. Yeah, I'm sure they talked to some lawyers and the lawyers were like, you are done, you are done. Uh, but that's hardly the end of it. This lawsuit has more collateral damage and could affect the future of emulation in general. We'll go through all those details right after a quick word from today's sponsor, Fume. Inside Games is sponsored by Fume. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that helps you break bad habits. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong, so instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? So instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing while breaking your habit. Coolest thing about Fume that I really like is the fact that they are helping you to break a bad habit with something that is completely all natural. You don't have to worry about it all. It's just something for an oral fixation. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Uh, head to try Fume, that's T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com slash inside games or scan the QR code and use code inside games to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's try dot com and use code inside games to save an additional 10% off on your order today. Thank you again for the sponsor, Fume. All right, thanks for the support, Fume. Getting back to the story though, Yuzu shut down and agreed to a $2.4 million settlement that's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tropic Haze also posted an apology on the Yuzu official site that sounded like it may as well have been written by Nintendo's lawyers themselves. Uh, they admitted that, quote, our projects can circumvent Nintendo's technological protection measures and allows users to play games outside of authorized hardware. Yeah, they added that, quote, piracy was never our intention, and we believe that piracy of video games and on video game consoles should end. Uh, very, very principled of them. <laughs> According to the filing, they also agreed to delete their copies of Yuzu, as well as all circumvention tools used for developing or using Yuzu, such as Tegra RCM GUI, Hecate, Atmosphere, Lockpick RCM, Indie Dump Tool, NX Dump Fuse, and Tegra Explorer. Oh man, pour one out for all those files and folders that we can't use anymore. <laughs> A lot of familiar names in there, unfortunately, for me. I'm like, Ugh. I bet they are, yeah. Uh, Tropic Haze also agreed to hand over any physical circumvention devices and modified Nintendo hardware to Nintendo. Uh, yeah, there's like, there's a thing you can do to Joy-Con so that you boot in a Nintendo, it's pretty cool. Anyway, as part of that agreement, Tropic Haze also shut down the 3DS emulator Citra as well. Uh-oh, and that raised a lot of ire online, considering that the 3DS is not an actively supported console by Nintendo anymore and hasn't been for quite a while. Yeah, the only way is to have a 3DS in physical games at this point, so yeah. starting to slice into game preservation a little bit. It's another day for Nintendo, though. YouTuber Omega Pro tweeted that shutting down Citro was crazy, adding that the 3DS shop isn't even available anymore. You literally can't buy new 3DS games if you wanted to. This isn't an attack on piracy, it's an attack on video game preservation. Mm, this is the latest in a long line of court battles that Nintendo has successfully fought. <laughs> yeah, they've been knocking them down lately, sheesh. <laughs> yeah. Two years ago, a hacker 
named Gary Bowser got 40 months in prison and a $4.5 million bill for the distribution and sale of piracy-enabling devices. In 2021, the owner of the now-defunct ROM Universe was nailed with a $2.1 million judgment for copyright and trademark infringement. And then there was the Arizona couple who were ordered to pay Nintendo $12.2 million in 2018 after they were sued for running sites which offered pirated ROMs. Needless to say, Nintendo does not play around when it comes to their IP and is very, very litigious about it. Yeah, to a point. You have to like kind of put your toe over a particular line, it seems, with Nintendo. Uh, and people keep doing it. Anyway, uh, but what does it mean for the future of emulators? That's kind of the concern here. All right, well, it's not clear yet, but attorney Richard Hogue told The Verge that the Yuzu settlement shouldn't create a legal precedent saying that, quote, settlements are not legal determinations, even with court sign-off, so they are not legally precedential. He added that it's a lot of money, but it's a known amount, and I suspect the advice Tropic Haze was getting was that their exposure was high and they had a good chance to lose after paying lawyers for a long time. Meanwhile, another popular Switch emulator, Ryu Jinx, is uh, still up and running. Look at that. Uh, but... <laughs> For how long, Lawrence? <laughs> Until they decide to charge access to shit they don't own. That's the, uh -huh. that's uh -huh. like, that's the poison that, that keeps happening. And I get that there's a lot of people with a lot of expertise and it's, it's tough to ask them to volunteer their time for this, but that's exactly where you offer yourself up to a legal prosecution. You can't make any money off of somebody else's copyrighted material. Uh, I guess, unless you're a react YouTuber, I don't know. There's some loopholes out there. But uh, yeah, I don't know, Bruce. Uh, how do you feel about how this went down? I, you know, to me, this is like, I don't necessarily look at Nintendo as the bad guy here. I really don't. That said, uh, like, if they did, did, did they really have evidence of one million pirated copies of Tears of the King? If they really had evidence of that, then to me, that actually does bite into Nintendo's business, right? So like, I, I actually can see why they did this. Um, but beyond that, you know, like, hey, Nintendo, let the little guy have a little something here. Come on, right? Come on, guys. Like, let the, let the little guy, you know, Nintendo's a billion dollar corporation has been for about 100, you know, 100 years. Yuzu's, for all intents and purposes, they are trying to do, uh, I think, legally what is right, other than charging for stuff that isn't theirs. That's where they, and I'm sure they started, when they stepped over that line, I'm sure they hired a lawyer and the lawyer was like, just so you know, you could get sued. So rake in as much money as you can right now. That's probably what happened um, because I'm sure they knew, but it does suck. And I, you know, it's like one of those things where maybe I feel like maybe Nintendo was even pressured to sue them because of the pirated tears of the kingdom. Yeah. Yuzu was, they were, they were being a little high profile around the launch of tears. And it was kind of well known on the internet that through Yuzu, you could play tears of the kingdom early. Yeah. And that's not something you want to like to be loud about. Unless you're running a Patreon and you're trying to attract customers. So even like my eyebrows went up when they started doing that. Uh, mm. I thought that they were they were flirting with the with a beast and then they got they got the horns. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 easy to paint Nintendo as the bad guy. I think they don't get credit for looking the other way, which they actually do quite a bit. It's not hard to find ROMs online. It's yeah. really not. And Nintendo yeah. could make it a lot harder. They just draw the line at people charging access, which is kind of what happened with some of the other cases there. Uh, I, be I believe one of the ROM websites was like, you can pay for faster downloads or something, and that's when it's like, nope. So Nintendo, you know, for people that are freely doing stuff in communities that aren't trying to make money off their IP, I do see a pattern of them looking the other way. Uh, that said, they won't release an updated Switch, so what do they expect us to do? Play Tears of the Kingdom at 30 FPS? Come on now. Come on. Come, hey, come on. Come on. But again, right. it's like if you own a Switch and you legally back up your legally owned games, uh, I suppose along the process there is a decryption that is not totally okay. But mm, I haven't gotten any letters in the mail about it yet. So I guess I, <laughs> until Nintendo sues me, it's not a problem. That's what I'm saying. Lawrence, what do you think about the Citra and 3DS emulation? Do you think that that is something that they should have just kept their hands off of because of game preservation? Or do you think since it's their own, they should just get rid of it entirely? Well, yeah, it's a series of dominoes. I mean, if if Tropic Haze hadn't have, hadn't have done that with Yuzu, they would still be working on Citra. So it's not like Nintendo went after Citra, they went after Yuzu and they happened to be connected. So there's collateral damage there, but I don't think YouTube, or I don't think Nintendo 
sued them specifically to get the 3DS emulator taken down. So again, I, I kind of think it's like, well, uh, Tropic Haze could have operated on a lower profile and kept doing that work, but they tried to turn money on it and then got it all sunk. So to me, that's where the decision making is falls. It's it's like when a when a fan project kicks up and it has a lot of a lot of heat, but it's based on a property like Star Wars. And inevitably the cease and desist comes along and everybody gets mad mm -hmm. at the studio that sent the cease and desist. But you don't start doing that unless you predict trouble in the future. And if you want that project to keep going, then you transition away and, and lose the branding. Uh, and you accept that that's just how the world works. So I don't know. Um, to me, the, the decision making was a little off here. Mm -hmm. And then it's unfortunate that the 3DS emulator got caught in the crossfire. But it is also Nintendo's platform and they're allowed to do with it what they want. And yes, that runs afoul of game preservation a lot of the time. But again, it's not that hard to find <laughs> on the internet. If you're practical and honest about it, game preservation happens. Uh, but at the end of it all, it has to be at the... Uh, at the expense of generous people who volunteer their time and skills. Right. So it's like people volunteering at the museum, but on the internet with a tip jar out that hopefully doesn't draw too much attention. This is also another big red flag for digital ownership versus physical ownership. Um, I know I have been saying for years and years and years, we're obviously going towards digital physicals phasing out. But at the same time, if you really want to hold on to something, then hold on to your 3DS games in a way to keep them on a platform because Nintendo really could just go after all of these ROMs at any point in time and be like, okay, they're all gone because they could sell the, resell them on their eShop. So just be aware. Uh, I know it sucks and we're probably never going to stop buying digital. This is what's going to happen. As, as time goes on, more and more things are going to get phased out. So. What you going to do, Bruce? I don't know. I'm not sure. One thing I'm going to do is be thankful, not only for the internet backing everything up, but also providing us with some wonderful patrons that support the show. I got a few of them here. They've never thrown away their 3DS. They're actually in the process of hoarding as many copies of... Gosh, I'm trying to think of a dumb 3DS game. I don't it's know. It's kind of hard to, yeah. to drop one on the spot, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sure there's a uh, ton. <laughs> man, remember, they put out Metal Gear Solid 3 on 3DS. That was a wild time. Oh, okay, sick. they're hoarding copies of Metal Gear Solid 3D. Christian Morgan Anderson, Evan S. Compton, Mason Hoover, and Kyle Heaton. You got great taste. I actually have some patrons that instead of uh, hoarding their 3DS, they just threw it in the trash and they said we want all digital all the time and just force feed it to us nintendo we'll give you all the money in the world brian cosner crab foam charles guard and nightboard dude what if what if a 3ds emulator had apple vision pro support wouldn't that be sick oh, oh my gosh metal gear solid 3d on apple vision pro Whoa. <laughs> uh, in 2021 the owner of the now defunct rom universe was nailed with a 2.1 million dollar dodgement oh damn 